Hey, welcome everybody to the Entrepreneur Bootcamp Podcast. I'm Derek Schmidt, and today I'd like to introduce our guest, Jenna Curry. I've known Jenna for a few years now. Jenna's done an excellent job uh, around our community with growing her brand and establishing herself as a thought leader. So in today's show, uh, I wanted Jenna to walk us through her journey to establishing her brand in the community and how that's helped her in her business. Um, so without further ado, Jenna, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Um, a little bit about me. So I uh, came here to Wilmington and went to college and graduated and had, uh, you know, right at, right at the recession in 2008 and wanted to um, meet people that were similar to me, people who were um, motivated. And, you know, it was a time when it was really hard to find a job. And so I started a in-person networking community and then a couple years later started um, a digital marketing company with a partner and then branched off to have my, my own agency and then later partnered with a publication. I'm a co-owner of a local publication here and now I also do some coaching and consulting for agency owners. So I kind of have four things that keep me pretty busy. Um, that is a very high level summary, but um, the Derek and I know each other through, I guess, through, um, gosh, through professional connections and then through the Port City Young Professionals, net, like in-person and online networking community. So yeah, there's a lot more we can get into with any of that, but that's kind of the, the high level overview of, of what I do. Yeah. And the, the Port City Young Professionals, that's, um, that's a very interesting story of how it started and what it looked like back when you started it to what it's become now. Um, which for anybody who's not local or has never attended, first, I'd encourage you to attend if possible, even virtually on these Zoom meetings. But um, they are, uh, you have a lot of trouble finding venues now because you have so many people that show up to these events. And that's got to be pretty awesome. Yeah, we're, we're getting into the supply and demand part of, uh, of growth where you can, you can start, you know, raising your prices, make it a little more limited. And we've been on the cusp for a long time. Now we, at the time of this viewing, we are in a, a pandemic and so live events aren't really a thing um, or in-person events aren't really a thing. So we'll see what, what the future of is that. But luckily we do have some, quite a few online offerings for our membership as well. And so that's kind of keeping us alive right now. Yeah, and you've done a great job of pivoting that to um, the virtual networking, uh, which seems to have worked out really well. So, um, one of the first things I wanted to ask you, how would you describe to somebody, what is a community brand? Yeah, so when, you, when I first read that question, because uh, I appreciate you sending me some of those questions in advance, I, you know, I immediately thought, well, that's more like a local, a local brand. Because in my opinion, like all, if a brand is doing it right, then there is a community that, that believes in it. And so a community brand is more like a local brand with local recognition with um, kind of a local following. But a brand is what other people say you are, basically. So doing that on a local level isn't all that different than doing it on a national level. It's just for us, we meet in person. And that is our huge value proposition, our angle that with we don't have to rely purely on marketing or email or, you know, automations to connect with our audience, we can talk to them and, and meet them in person, which is huge, like huge value to be able to learn things really quickly. Yeah, I agree. You know, uh, there was something I heard and I'm probably going to do a terrible job at trying to remember this, but somebody explained something to me a while back and I've always kind of attributed that to some of the things that I've tried to do, but certainly with what you have done with PCYP and some of your other ventures, and that's when you can start something like that in your community, you kind of own that space, right? Like you, so I've done, uh, we've done the WordPress meetups each month, right? And so with that, we were able to pull off a WordCamp. And like, I think uh, that's been one of the things to help me and my name in the community with being, um, just knowing people knowing that I know a lot about WordPress. So I imagine the same would go for you. 
and the PCYP and the marketing and the genius idea to take over the traditional publication because now it kind of goes hand in hand. Um, so that was a very interesting thing I wanted to bring up. But yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, well, I never intended for to young professionals like to be what it became. I literally wasn't like, oh, this is going to be a lead generation source for my future agency or this is going to be anything that I monetize. Like I never even... It didn't even occur to me at 23 when I started it that, you know, this would be something that would generate an income. It was just, I knew I wanted to meet people like me and I wasn't meeting them with like the current circle of friends I was hanging out with at the time. And I was like, okay, so what can I create to solve this problem to, to make myself a magnet and attract people to me? Um, I don't mind doing the heavy, you know, it wasn't heavy lifting, but you know, finding a place, um, getting them to donate some appetizers in exchange for me committing to bring a certain amount of people there. And that's really how it started was like 17 people at our first event. Um, I was just sending emails from my personal Gmail. Um, I was using somebody else's uh, email list because I didn't know anyone. And so I, my friend who was a little bit older, more connected, I said, Hey, can I, you know, let's invite some of your friends. I want to start this thing. And so um, my co-founder, Sasha, um, I, it was basically most of her friends to get started with. And so next, so we all met, Hey, next month, everyone bring a person. And that was literally the, the start of it. Yeah. You said two very important things there. Lots of important things, but two that I want to bring up. Um, one was that you didn't start this for the ability to earn an income, which I think is very important. Like every entrepreneur book I've ever read, that's like, you know, rule one, right? You don't want to start a business to make money. You want to start something you're passionate about. Um, and then I had a second one, but I totally forgot it, but still that first one was, was really important. Uh, well, I, th oh. I think the fact that I, that was my intention, it, it never came off, um, icky, you mm -hmm. know, like I've been to events that were framed as networking and then you get there and they're like, by the way, this isn't a network. This isn't just free networking. Like we want you to buy stuff or yeah. we're trying to pitch you this thing. And because all I just wanted was community, literal community, that it never felt like work. And then it just got so big that I had to start creating systems. And PCYP became my playground, my sandbox for practicing all the digital marketing skills I was learning um, yeah. as I was wanting to start my agency. Yeah. And you solved a problem, which was the second most important role, if not first most important role. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that's, that's probably the most important rule is, yeah, finding a legitimate problem that you can solve or that you want to solve and then just be the aggregator of other people to help solve that problem. Because you can just be, you know, the curious person saying, I don't know how to solve this problem, but I'm going to bring all these people together and interview them or, you know, give them the platform and I'm just the interviewer to help solve that problem. Um, so you don't have to know all the answers. I certainly didn't, but um. no, I fake it a lot. <laughs> don't tell anybody. <laughs> right. um, okay, so fast forward to you know now. Uh, do you believe that having uh, that community brand? I'm going to keep referring to it as uh, has added a value to your business. Has it helped your business at all? And if so, how? Yeah, in ways I could have never dreamed of, especially because it it hasn't felt like work. It's just been a labor of love for years. And um, what it has done for me is, you know, my primary income comes from my agency where I have clients and I fulfill on contracts and, but I don't get the recognition for that. Um, like I've won um, one, like women to watch 40 under 40 top 100, like all in our local area. And then I, I, pretty much anyone will return an email. People will return my phone calls. I can get a meeting with people. It just immediately positions you as an authority because I have, I'm a gatekeeper to 3000 plus young professionals. So if people want to, you know, get in front of our audience, they have to go through me. And so that immediately is, you know, you have something that other people want. And that just gives you an, an, an interesting angle to when you do want to make the first move or to just draw people to you in general. So it's, 
it's actually, it made starting my agency not that hard. In general, I didn't have to rely on, you know, cold leads or cold traffic or just, you know, running ads to people, someone people didn't know. I was really able to go out to people who I'd already provided a service to like, Hey, you've been coming to my events or, Hey, we've been having events at your business or restaurant. Um, you know, this is what it would look like if we did this other thing. So I, you know, really had a huge head start. Yeah. And it all just kind of evolved naturally for you, right? That's pretty- yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, okay, you're talking to somebody, you know, a younger version of you, somebody new, just starting out. How would someone go about creating a community around their brand, whether that be locally, locally regionally, nationally, whatever that looks like? Um, let's, let's pick, let's pick a type of company and let me sure. riff off that. Mm. I'll let you pick the company because I'll be selfish and I'll use like one of my examples. Uh, you go ahead and give me a company. <laughs> okay. So let's say like somebody in health and wellness, mm-hmm. they, they, um, are either a mindset coach or health and wellness coach or an instructor of some sort and they're brand new in their business. Um, just creating a free Facebook group where you do a free workout a week or you host a, an in-person workout a week or now you can do virtual workouts a week or meal plans or you're going to show them how to make a smoothie recipe or um, your, your um, you know, kind of whatever it is that is that whatever activity to create content puts you in flow. Like maybe it's recording video, maybe it's audio, maybe it's writing, maybe it's in person, but whatever it is, like kind of base it on your original skill set. Like I'm better on video. It's more, it's easier for me than for me to sit down and write like epic blog posts. Like some people are just amazing writers. Like I'm a good writer, but it's, it's work for me. Whereas like, I can just record a video for someone. Like I just, I literally send people videos, like I record a video, send it to them, I do it to my clients too. Like it's just so much easier for me. So whatever comes most naturally for you, lead with that and then build a community where you can just lead with that. And then you can grow into the other things that you need. But um, yeah, basically thinking about what you, what problem you want to solve and then where are those people? And then, you know, like um, uh, Russell Brunson talks about, you know, with, with traffic, you don't have to go create traffic. The traffic already exists. You just have to put yourself in front of the traffic so that it hits you. And so if you are in the health and wellness space, like where are those people that want the results, that desire the results that you can help them achieve? You know, are they in the park? Are they, so, you know, have once, once a week or once a month in person things in the park. And then really you have to start by giving a lot of value, a lot of free resources. Um, People have to like, know, and trust you typically before they give you money. And if they don't already, then they're probably working with you because they know other people like know and trust you. And so you've already built your authority and credibility with someone else. If you're brand new, one of the best things you can do is just, you know, offer your services to five people, um, get tons of feedback from them through the process, validate what you're doing, and then, you know, build a referral network off of them. Um, but for me, I, I mean, if I could go back and do it all again, I would have done it a lot differently. Yeah. I mean, it took six years before I made a, a penny off of uh, the networking group. And it was a lot of time, a lot of time. <laughs> um, but now, you know, whenever I have an idea that I want to explore, um, that's, that's the much better approach. Talking to people, interviewing people who are, are further ahead than you, or, you know, bringing people in and like testing your your model on them, you know, make sure, you know, you've done it on yourself or you know that it works and then, you know, validate it with other people and then grow from there. Nice. I, um, there was a presentation at Tech Mountain not long ago, you may have attended, but they talked about how the way we are sold to has changed and it's all value-based selling now, right? So you want to give stuff away for free and build that relationship and solve problems and then people will trust you and spend money with you. And so that sounds right. like exactly what you were talking about. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it is. It's whoever, um, can, what is it? Whoever can pay the most to acquire the customer wins. And you don't, you don't do that by charging more. You don't do that by, um, 
you know, ripping people off, you do that by adding value. So mm -hmm. if I can, if you can buy a book for $20 or you can buy the same book for $20, but it comes with the ebook, the audio book, um, this other PDF guide of, you know, tips and tricks and all of this. And so all of a sudden it's a $250 value for 20 bucks, yeah. you know, which book you're going to buy. I'd, even if the other one was 15, I'd still buy the $20 book. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, and I don't know if this changes things, but what about somebody who wants to create like a personal brand? How would someone go about creating a personal brand for themselves? Yeah, I, I like this question and I, you know, what I want to say is what a personal brand is not. A personal brand is not hiring a photographer and getting a bunch of, pic a bunch of pictures of you with a laptop. <laughs> Yeah. Or action. you, <laughs> yeah, you know, that is not a personal brand um, because you can have a personal brand without ever having, you know, a super high end professional photo taken of you. Like, yes, that can be part of personal brands, but that is something like I didn't even have a professional headshot until a few years ago. And then finally had some like branded shoots, um, kind of branding shoot for my website and stuff just last year was the first time I'd ever done that other than when you know, like a, a photo from an event or something. And I, I definitely have a, a personal local brand for sure, just through my reputation, because your brand is what other people say about you. So if you're not, um, um, out of, if you're not operating out of integrity, if you're not doing what you say you're going to do, if you're not solving the problem you say you're, you're going to solve, like you're going to have a really poor personal brand. Um, and it also, you can have an amazing, amazing business and only have, you know, a hundred people in your, in your group or a hundred people in your community. But if each of those hundred people are paying you $10,000, like you're doing pretty good. Right. Yeah. And so people think like, okay, I'm going to create this personal brand and, um, you know, it's going to be fashion or it's going to be, um, you know, uh, info products or what, whatever it's going to be. And they think they need to have this huge following and this huge list and they need to be on every platform. And that I would say like you can grow and to all of that, but you have to prove that you can do it for your first hundred people. You know, how many of those hundred people that are following you, can you get to move into the next step of your funnel? How many of those hundred people want your free offer? How many of those hundred people want your $9 offer? You know, how many of those people are going to like go up the value ladder and, and get, you know, whatever big ticket thing you're selling, because then, you know, okay, five out of a hundred, you know, I can make, you know, $5,000, then, okay, that means if I have a 1000 people, I can make $50,000. And then you kind of grow that way. But it, but, you know, for a personal brand, I would say start on the platform you enjoy the most, mm -hmm. that lets you utilize your personal skill set the most, if it's writing, you know, start on the blog and share it to, you know, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook, and pick one of those social media platforms where you're going to be really engaged. Every time somebody comments, you're there with a really genuine reply. It's not just a like or an emoji. It's, it's people like getting to know you. And then as part of that, you have a way to get them into an email list because you want to own that list and not rely on, on social media to only own that list. But, um, and if it's video, maybe it's a YouTube channel. So it doesn't, it's just whatever your, what, yeah, whatever your natural skill set is. And if, mm -hmm. if it's none of them, then finding one to work on and refine, master that and get it to where you're, you know, you have it in a place where you want to be and then get somebody to um, try to create systems for that so that somebody can support you and help you with that. And, you know, don't just leave it and move to the next one. Hopefully it's still doing, doing its thing mm -hmm. and then move on to the next thing. And that's something I did wrong in like every way, like my whole life or especially when I was first getting into digital marketing, I was like, I have to know how to do everything. I got to be everything to everyone. And yeah. it, you end up wasting a lot of time and you're doing a disservice to your clients because they would rather just have one thing that works than 10 things that kind of work that are mediocre yeah the best sure. the best sell the best channel for your business in other words is the one that you're actually going to do and use yes exactly <laughs> yeah like yeah which one feels good like if every time you get on instagram you're like oh, i take horrible pictures or i don't like being in pictures then like maybe blogging is better for you yeah. you know <laughs> yeah. and i think that's important because a lot of 
a lot of people that I'll talk to sometimes, I'm sure it's the same with you. They, they feel like they have to be all these things and all places. And that's just not the case. Um, there's so much noise out there. It can be very easy to get distracted. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So let me change gears a little bit. What tips can you provide someone trying to create brand awareness in a new market? Uh, well, I think doing some of the things I said for, you know, starting your own in-person community, it's the same thing. I feel like brand and community are very interchangeable because mm -hmm. if you have a brand without community, you're, you're not going to last the, the test of time because if somebody comes along who's your exact competitor, but they have the ability to bring community and connection and relationships and foster a sense of, you know, connection and then there you're going to be ruined because like we're humans and like that's what we desire we desire connection we desire um meaning and so um i think if you can find a way to create community out of your passion and then just over deliver to your audience whatever that is whatever problem you know is most likely to solve them and don't just assume you know what their problem is and don't just assume you know how to solve it too like you can start somewhere but then like ask them. <laughs> yeah. I've made that mistake of creating products and offerings and events and then finding out later that no one really cared, you know, and had I just asked, it's like, oh, that's what they want. <laughs> Create that and it sells out. Like, yeah. it's the craziest thing. But um, yeah, I kind of feel like I've answered that in some of the other things, but, but it's, it's really not that different. And that's why I love what's happened with PCYP. I've learned so many lessons through this group and even though it's in person so much of it applies to what we do digitally yeah i mean even the short time that i've been involved with it i've seen it evolve from um you know now you've got it, it's a business you've got the system you've got the processes you've got your executive team i mean it's uh it's really interesting to, to have watched that evolve in the short time that i've known you which has only been a couple of years so uh, mm -hmm. Very yeah. good on that. I, I got some really good people on my team that helped. I, I, it was, it was, it was neglected for a bit. And then, you know, I am at, my strength is not systems. So making sure I have people uh, supporting my, um, my creative brain to kind of like create systems because right now so much of what we do is automated it's like an employee. It's literally in a, what I would pay an employee every month of, of things that are created just through, through automations of what happens. Um, Cause we have a mobile app and we have like an email platform and we have, um, we do social media features and like all of that is automated with tags and triggers based on what has been done or hasn't been done. And like, we're still, you know, and even though it's, it's really only been a year, mm, a little over a year since things have kind of been where I, the way that I want, but now I'm starting to think of other, I know you're probably going to get to this question, um, you know, of, of other things that the, the community wants on the education and training site around networking. And I have to be careful to not, you know, all of a sudden try to think everybody wants to be a marketer. And I've made that mistake before where it's like, mm -hmm. I'm going to teach PZYP members how to be marketers. And these are people from, you know, every kind of background and they're not necessarily care about marketing, but, but they're there for networking. And so there's absolutely, you know, more content that we could be creating, you know, and we do, we do create content. We have, you know, lots of stuff on our blog and uh, we share resources for other people. But as far as like, what would like a course or an ebook or something look like for like tangible skills that would especially in our like unique little community <laughs> yeah yeah it's definitely unique yeah. um you mentioned something at, at the beginning of that about how you had amazing people and that was a great intro into our next question how would somebody get others involved so that they're not pretty much a, a one-man army trying to take care of all of this stuff yeah that would be another thing i would have said to uh early on entrepreneur jenna is get help um, and let, and let people go early if they, if they're, if they don't pull their weight or they let you down. I've had bad partners. I've had, you know, people who I kept giving the benefit of the doubt that didn't work out, but that shouldn't stop you from con continuing to find other people to, um, believe in your mission. And they're not your minions. They're not your, um, 
you know, the, these are people that you want to bring in to be a part of your mission to link arms with, because doing it alone is like, no matter what it is, whether it's creating your own community, your own business, doing it alone is so it's, it's so hard and lonely and it's, it's not linear, you know, growth as an entrepreneur is not linear. So the more people you can have, even if it's just, you know, a, a once a week mastermind with other people who are in a similar um, situation I had, um, I was in a business book club in the beginning and that business book club helped me as much as my college degree in being a, a professional, that business, I mean, actually more so, um, um, and just realizing that you're not alone. And so when you, to get those people initially, you just have to find other people that are passionate about the problem you're trying to solve or, and or the audience you're trying to serve. So it might not be like, I might not know what problem I want to solve, but I might say, I know I want to work with teenage girls. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what it is, you know, that I want to do, but I know that I want to help guide them to entrepreneurship. So I don't know what I'm going to do, but then I go and say, who's already doing that? And then put myself in between them and then, you know, start interviewing people. And then when I have the idea, all these people that I talk to, hey, do you want to help me with this? Can you introduce me to someone? Um, and then if you can find a few, a few people in the beginning, then you're going to grow a lot faster. And then you find ways to overthink the people that help you um, or put them in a position of where they're empowered so that they're like personally and like emotionally invested, that they're not just, you know, there to, you know, hold your jacket. Um, we built in like basically once PCAP started growing past 50 people consistently, I knew that I couldn't do it myself. I try to do it myself because I don't like asking for help. Um, I've gotten better about it, but it's still hard for me. And um, I just didn't want to be a burden to anyone. I didn't want anyone, you know, and, um, and then for a while I would have friends, but then my like good friends and then they would be like, Oh, well I have a headache or this other thing came up or it's raining. So they would like have terrible reasons for not coming. I'm like, okay, so I don't want to, I can't resent them. because This is like a volunteer thing, but they're doing it because they're my friend. Like I want to find people who want to do this because they're trying to get out of it the same thing I'm trying to get out of it. Mm -hmm. And so um, slowly, like I found like this tribe of people who some I found some found me of people who who also wanted to be positioned as leaders who wanted to take some responsibility. And so we built out the ambassador program, which has evolved over over the years. And kind of, it's kind of started with just a few people. And now we have like 30. And every new member gets assigned an ambassador. And we have like, we built out this whole beautiful system last year and now we can't have live events, but it's, it's evolved. And what it's done is made me feel like one, this, this entity can exist without me, which is the goal of any entrepreneur is to like continue to grow yourself out of each role. And um, it makes me feel like, okay, this has the possibility of going to other cities, which I had always you know dabbled in before or thought about, but um, couldn't wrap my head around how I could make it like economically work with the time in. But once you start seeing how things can work where it's not just one person doing everything that it could be, you know, truly valuable. So that was kind of a long way to answer more of a story, but find other people who believe in the audience you're believe in solving the problem you're solving or believe in serving the audience you're believing and then give them a platform, empower them, thank them profusely. And, um, that's a good place to start. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you hit it on the head. I think uh, what you're pretty much ex uh, explaining is culture. You've developed a culture, right? And there, um, I do the same in, in the agency where there's not really a hierarchy. There's not me at the top. It's kind of, you said the linked arms. So it's kind of this. Mm -hmm. I always try to be very careful not to use my or I, and it's always we and ours. And so you've developed that culture in this community within your community, your brand community. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really cool. Um, so I wanted to ask you, what does your five year plan look like? Because you have multiple businesses, um, plus you have PCYP. So I wanted to kind of pick your brain a little bit. What does your five year plan look like? Yeah, so such a great question. And, you know, I, I spent a lot of 
of time and like my early years as an entrepreneur started at 26, like in a partner in an agency, I had a really rough start starting out in, in business for myself. And it took me several years to kind of get to a place where I would even had like a comfortable income. I um, mean, I was like literally working in a basement for, for years. And, um, and so I just like had this grind mentality where like, I'm just, you know, I just have to work and get it done. And then I was like undercharging and just bad business partner, like all, all the, like the perfect storm of, of challenges. And then started on like my agency on my own and started having success, but then still it was just like this crazy amount of, of work. And I knew it wasn't sustainable. And so I've been just in the last year, like kind of closer to what my, and what my five-year plan to be, which is definitely like delegating and, you know, getting to where I say I'm great at systems. I'm great at training. I'm great at um, asking for help and, and having other people to kind of continue on the things that I've started. And like, I am multi-passionate. Like I've so many times thought like, what if I just, you know, went with the publication, you know, put all my energy in that. What if I just put all my energy into my agency or all my energy into piece VIP? Like, yes, probably it would do, they would all do better if I just focused on them, but I'm just not wired that way. And I'm like done apologizing for it. And I'm just like, I'm just always going to be interested in, in multiple things. <laughs> Preach it. Thank you. I yeah. Know. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. so I, I did this exercise um, and we do this with um, some of our coaching clients that are agency owners are on like, what, what is your perfect day look like? Like if your perfect average day, as I started with the, like a Frank Kern video from God, like the two thousands and early two thousands. And you, um, um, like, you know, when you wake up, what do you feel? What are you thinking about? What are you doing? Who are you eating with? What are you talking about? And kind of like, what, do, what are you doing in your perfect average day? And then kind of working backward from there. So for me, it's not working 12 hours a day, which I've done. I'm not doing that now. And it's, um, it's having a team, it's being able to think creatively, it's being able to like pay people well, and, and be able to provide like, like good salaries and benefits and having people that, um, that you have fun with, like, and having clients that I love hanging out with. And so with, <laughs> With that, like, I'm, I'm trying more of like, so, so with, so some people like have their own business and they're like, well, I just want to make more money. I just want to make, you know, millions of dollars or get it to a point to sell. And like, yeah, that all sounds great. But I feel like I've built my, my dream agency and that I'm able to provide like a really great service, really great outcomes and work with really cool people. And like, that's that's my five-year goal is to keep working with like my dream clients and hopefully like those dream clients will just become better paying client clients and getting more value. And so I'm not having to do like, it, it's not more work. It's just more value. Yeah. Um, now with PCYP, it's, you know, that when I do have the energy to put into it and I, it ebbs and flows, sometimes I'm like all about PCYP and other times I'm like, you know, it's, it, I, what, what I want to see is in the value ladder, um, an online course, um, that teaches networking, um, skills and with like templates and just like, basically people get it wrong so much about how networking works. And even people after I've like explained to them, it's about like, it's a give in short, it's a give first mentality. Um, networking is not walking around, you know, with your business card, like call me, buy from me. It's, it's give first. And it doesn't have to be like give free service or give free stuff. It's just give of your energy of, of some way. And like networking is just an exchange of energy. It's like money, it's an exchange of energy. And and there are ways to do that and there are ways not to do that. And um, so creating like, and then having possibly just because I would like to move out of more of like the implementation role, which I do a lot of implementation because I like it, but I also like being on the coaching and consulting role. And so having to wear like 
there's other things happening, but I can be more like one-on-one -on -one or group or events like in the coaching and consulting. But um, I would love to see some things like that happen with PCYP if people, you know, say they want it, you know, and I haven't even put that out there yet to be like, hey, if I created this, would you guys want it? Because I even thought about doing like, hey, I'm going to do like, like have five like people apply, pick five people and literally just do like one-on-one, -on -one, some one-on-one -on -one coaching um, for like them growing their business. But it's just like a different strategy than, you know, what, what we do digitally because a lot can be done, especially for like, you know, insurance or financial um, advisors and realtors. Like there's so much like in-person networking that happens and like is valuable. So yeah. that's like where I see PCYP going. Um, I'm working on a new and a new software that I'm going to slowly move everything from PCYP into, which would actually make what I do so much more duplicatable. So I have people from other cities like reach out like, Hey, how did you do this? And it's like, Oh my God, that's like, so, it'd be so much to tell you, but, um, a way to like a more of a plug and play way to take like the systems that we've created that other people could duplicate and then maybe even offering like you know here like you can just take it and run with it or there's like a done with you version and you know like where they would get you know time with me if they somebody wanted to to start it so yeah that's, that's awesome. yeah so are you but, thinking it's going to become more like a, a licensing like you somebody raleigh which is two hours away for anybody who's not local to us uh, could license the PCYP name and program and everything and kind of start their own version up over there. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, it's something, yeah, I've, I've played with for years, but I just like, I'll know in my gut when it's the right time. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, I want to, I don't want to give somebody a business that's going to make 30 grand a year. Like that's not like, I don't want to do that to anyone. Like here, go work really hard. <laughs> Yeah. Start this thing and make 30, 30 grand a year. Um, so if I could get PCYP where it was making, you know, a six figure income and somebody didn't have to work full time to create something like this, even if it was something they had to grow into, because right now it's, it doesn't do that. I mean, it, I, I make income from it, but it's not like, it's not those numbers, but it 100% has the possibility to. Um, so if I, once I think, once I could validate that with somebody else, like take somebody else and say, okay, let me help you do this, you know? And then I would be again, like with the commute, with, <laughs> with what we're talking about, go prove that I can do it with somebody else and then start telling other people like, Hey, here's this program. You can position yourself as a leader in your own community. Um, and it doesn't even have to be for young professionals. It could be for digital marketers or yeah. wedding industry. Like it could be for any, any program, um, or, or any, you know, route, but it would just be like, use our, our systems. Yeah. Makes sense. It's, um, it's similar to a, a B and I without the, um, application fee and the initial investment and all the rules mm -hmm. and regulations. So yeah, very, I'm excited. Right. And B and I is making a lot. Of, yeah. They're, they're doing a lot at the national level. We ask very little of, yeah. of ours and that's just how it's always, it's just how it's always been. doesn't mean it couldn't survive otherwise yeah so my next question which you touched on you said um delegation so i want to see if there's anything else but is there anything you're doing at the moment to make that five-year plan a reality um in my agency we've started just niching down so from just taking um we've just found a real sweet spot in education so working with um public and private universities, colleges, um, um, people, uh, organizations that create like licenses or certifications or things like EMT. Um, so we just found like a real sweet spot there. And so um, the, the platform we're building out right now just makes dupli duplication a lot more simple. Um, and we're able to offer like tremendous value for about the same we were charging before, but adding in all these features and functionality that that we didn't have before. So I'm really excited about the potential of being able to grow my agency without having to kind of, we never really start from scratch uh, with a client, but kind of from starting from scratch, from having, yeah. you know, a framework to start with and something that we've already validated. So um, I've just always been like a, you know, a yes person. So I'm like, okay, this client, we're going to, 
we're going to, if I can, if it, if I can make it make sense, then like we take it on. And, but a lot of times it just ends up being a lot more work than just niching down to a specific industry. So we mostly work with service-based um, industries and then in education, but we've also worked with mobile apps and e-commerce and um, kind of, you know, a bit of everything, but niching for us is definitely where we're, where we're headed. So. Okay. So niching and then you've got a software that's pretty much going to get you to that five-year goal of working less and making more money. Perfect. Yeah. Well, and when you have something that's duplicatable, it's easier to train people and, and be able to replace people because, you know, they, I, like the likelihood of having somebody for, for five years just isn't what, you know, what it used to be. So, you know, yeah. get it. And this we're doing like with, um, you know, with PCYP, we, I have someone and like, we have like slide presentations and like Slack channels and like people, they can find what they need to do and flows that exist. So like, you know, who I have for me right now, like she's done in July. So we just take the new person and like plug them right back into, into the, the system. And that's very new, yeah. <laughs> not having to start from scratch training someone. Sessing. And me like reteaching myself, like, uh, how did I do this? Yeah. Watch this yeah. video. <laughs> yeah. Systems and processes, man. That's one thing I wish I could I have told my younger self was that I wish I would have documented everything a lot earlier. Um, Cause I didn't realize how important that was. Uh, it's not fun to document for me, but uh, uh, yeah, you have to, cause then you're yeah. save yourself. Yeah. I've got a really good hack on how to do that in another video using like your, your phone's voice and a Google doc just to kind of spit it all out and go in and organize it. Mm -hmm. later. But my last question for you before jumping into this lightning round, uh, you've partially answered, but going back to your younger self, what would you say to yourself and what, what would you have changed? The, like, I think two, two of my biggest struggles as a, as an entrepreneur have been like one asking for help, which I did mention before, because, um, you can't, you can't do everything alone. And just realizing that if you're feeling it, somebody else is probably feeling it too. And like, I was on my own for a while before, like I started having conversations with other business owners that are like, Oh my God, you're going through that too. You feel like you're an imposter. Like, you know, yeah. you're just kind of making it up as you go. <laughs> Not exactly like that, but, um, and then, um, the other is just growing up. We, um, like just my family didn't have a lot of money. And so I've always, you know, I had a lot of things to get past with just like my mindset about money and how I treat it and how I feel about it and the relationship that I had with it. And I think that my early years as an entrepreneur, when I really was undercharging and just really getting taken advantage of for both from my like first em employer and like some of my early clients and whether, you know, and for them, they're, they're just looking out for themselves, but like seeing, you know, their businesses like flourish. And then meanwhile, like I'm just like barely getting by just because I, you know, when I would send out invoices, I would like have anxiety, you know, like, oh my God, like, are they going to pay it? Are they going to yeah. fight me for this? Like, it's too hot. And, it's too low. yeah. <laughs> and so I've had to do a lot of like work on myself and like unpacking those beliefs that I have about money and, um, and realizing that, you know, it's, it's, it's not scarce. It's not a bad thing. It's not something that like, you should you know put on a pedestal um right. or something you should say is like evil or bad you know because like there's definitely people are like oh well money's bad so um it would be getting like dealing with my <laughs> my weird issues about money earlier which is kind of like I don't I don't want to feel like that's a like, icky thing to talk about you know like we don't necessarily talk about like being an entrepreneur to make money but when you make money you can help more people you can do more yeah. you can give back more and so um i think i wish earlier on i just really was yeah had had a better mindset about money yeah i can relate to that um all right so the lightning round uh this is designed to hopefully we get it going quickly you answer them as quickly as possible i allowed you to cheat a little bit by giving you a heads up on the questions which maybe i'll take out on future uh, guess, but yeah. Um, the first one is, what is your favorite quote? Okay, so I definitely would have answered 
this one, um, this quote, and I don't know if I'll get it exactly right, but it's a Maya Angelou quote, and it's, you know, people remember, they won't remember what you say, they won't remember what you do, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. And I think that that quote just applies to just everything in life that one that's brought me success because I haven't always been the smartest or the best or the greatest or the first, but I've always had the ability for people to know that like I'm genuine and, and where I'm coming from. And so genuinely people will help me or work with me because they, they feel good about me if they trust me. And, um, and it's something that we think about from our clients of how, what they're putting out there, you know, like yeah. you just, just remember if you make them, if you, you know, like there's some stuff going on right now and brands are really screwing the pooch, like what yeah. they're, what they're, yeah. what they're saying and people know what that feels and they don't forget that feeling. They might forget if you, you know, did, did something crappy, but if you made them feel crappy, yeah, they're not going to forget that. That's a really good quote. What's your favorite book? So I, I read, God, so many business books. I mean, just look behind me in my virtual office. Yeah. I know I really have. And um, a couple are um, Crucial Conversations is one of my favorites. Um, uh, High Performance Habits by um, Brenda Burchard. And then the one that I put in my notes was the one that I just finished. And it's, it's, applicable for a few reasons one it's um you are a badass at making money by jen sincero and it's awesome because one it talks about a lot of like the mindset things about money and like how you can basically rewire your brain to change how you what you believe and feel about money and position yourself and let the universe know that like you're ready to like serve and like be be this person that you want to be but it talks a lot more about just like mindset and beliefs and just like your um just like yeah your internal beliefs and I've just been doing I feel like for for years I was doing so much external work like the grind and that it's just in the last couple of years I've been like okay I need to be good with me why am I the way that I am what do I really want I don't just have to like you know grind it out for the rest of my life like what really makes me tick what do I really desire what do I really want and so it and Thing, whatever your beliefs, whether it's spiritual, um, religious, and how you feel about that. It talks about that in the book too, where it's just, um, you know, kind of how you can manifest the, the life that you want. You can attract things into your life that you desire that everything you want in this world already exists because if you can think about it, it exists and how you draw those things to you. So it was a cool book because it, I just feel like it's just tying up so many things that I've been working on myself that um, I definitely recommend it. And she's funny and she cusses a lot. And so do I. So yeah. <laughs> Muhammad Ali, if I could believe it, if my mind can conceive it, I can achieve it. I probably yeah. would. Uh, and then the law of yeah. attraction, lots of power. Yes, um, totally. It's all right in, right in there. What is your favorite hobby? So I'm a golfer. I'm a golfer. I started golfing really early. So funny. Yeah, I just don't see you as a golfer, mainly because uh, I don't golf. So I don't, yeah. you know, but uh, that is awesome. So And then I have an electric one wheel, too. So those are, my, those are my two favorite things right now. <laughs> that is awesome. Um, tell me a little bit about your morning routine. Yeah. Oh, man. There is some lightning going on. Yeah. So, my again, my morning routine, I'll, I'll – I'll frame it like I did with, you know, all, all the businesses that I'm in is that it's, it's not the same for me every day. And I tried that. I tried the route of this is what I do in this process every day. And for me, like, I really just have to like trust what I think is going to feel good that day. So some mornings I start with, I mean, I try to exercise every day. My, the days I feel the best are when I start my morning with like a run or a walk or uh, orange theory. When it was open quarantine, I was running almost every day. Um, listening to a podcast or reading a few pages of a book. Um, and it's more so those things than um, music every once in a while it's music. And then um, I, I need to like speak things into existence. I need to, so I have to like sing or talk to myself or record a video to a friend or get on a call early. Like those things just kind of like, just, just start my, my engines, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
I've been doing more meditation lately, but again, not every day that feels good. So I do more of my like meditating and thinking when I'm like, on a walk or exercising, but I'm really, really trying to get more into meditating because I've just heard just endless reasons of why it's amazing. Yeah. Um, and so I've had like, you know, a few like great experiences, but I'm still like, you know, pretty new to it. But um, yeah, so it's a little different every day, but I, um, I'm definitely feeding and fueling myself every morning with like good vibes. Yeah. I'm the same way. I have to switch things up. I, I get boring doing the same exact thing every day. So I get mm-hmm. a lot of similarities, but uh, all right. I'm going to give you three uh, animals, insects, etc. And you've got to name uh, which one based on the question. So one of these you're scared of, one of them is a pet, and one is your spirit animal. You have an armadillo, a snake, and a spider. Which one are you scared of? Probably the snake. I just, I don't see a lot of snakes. Um, so when I do, even if I know they're probably like friendly and safe, like I'm probably of the three, that would not scare me. Yeah. Which one's um, the pet? Um, yeah, I can't imagine having a pet spider. So I would have to say armadillo. <laughs> because that's totally normal. <laughs> okay, which one is your spirit animal? I guess would be the spider. Yeah, if I, I have to align it. Yeah, sure. You know, actually, that would make sense. You know, they got, they got lots of legs. I got lots of passions, lots of, lots of interest. Um, and yeah, you never know what, what direction I'm going to go. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. Uh, and then last thing is, uh, tell everybody again, uh, who you are and where they can connect with you. Okay. Uh, Jenna Curry, I am the founder and president of Port City Young Professionals, uh, the owner and lead digital strategist of Remedy Digital Agency, co-owner of Wilmington Today, and a partner in Growth Labs Coaching, which is a coaching program for agency owners. You can connect with me on Facebook at Jenna Curry Leads, uh, on Instagram at Jenna Curry underscore, or just shoot me an email, Jenna at Jenna Curry. Uh, Love to connect. Perfect. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, make sure you stay tuned for the next episode and check out Jenna. Thank you again for coming on the show, Jenna.